My brother and I have been close since we were kids. Even after we became adults, until he got married, we often spent our weekends together. Years passed since he got married. One day, when I assumed he was living happily, I received a shocking message from him. I'm being accused of an affair I know nothing about and they're demanding compensation in the divorce court. It seemed that my sincere and earnest brother was being sued by his sister-in-law. I immediately headed to my brother's house. My name is Ava. I'm a 31-year-old woman working as a lawyer. After graduating from law school, I became a lawyer and now work at a prominent firm. I always struggled with studies, so it wasn't an easy journey to get where I am today. Still, I became a lawyer and now live a busy but fulfilling life. Of course, every day is a day of learning, and I think it'll always be. But I have a unique hobby. Gaming. I'm what you call a gamer, and when I have time, I play online games with my brother, also a gamer. Samuel, my brother, who's five years older, supported me during my college admissions and bar exams. We're still very close. I was forming my career as a lawyer while enjoying games with Samuel. But since he got married last year, we played less frequently. One relaxed weekend at home, Samuel called. Hey, do you have a moment? I need some advice. It was unusual for reliable Samuel to ask for guidance. Though surprised, I listened closely. Lately, my wife's been acting strange. She's out often and sometimes doesn't come home at night. I hope I'm just overthinking. Samuel began talking about his wife, Charlotte. He said she often wasn't home when he returned from work and sometimes didn't come home at all without notice. I only met Charlotte at their wedding, so I don't know her well. But from our few meetings, she seemed friendly. So I was taken aback. It's not inherently wrong to stay out late or go out but if it happens too often, it's concerning. If there are relationship issues or infidelity, something has to be done. That's why Samuel consulted me, being a lawyer, about potential solutions. However, from a legal perspective, you can't do anything without evidence. Moreover, involving a lawyer isn't the most peaceful solution especially without any proof against his wife. Since I didn't have a clear picture of the situation, I decided not to intervene just yet. I totally get why you'd be anxious, I began, but without more details, it's hard to say. There's a chance she might just be out having fun. If you really want to know, our office is partnered with a detective agency. I can introduce you if you like. Right now, there was little I could do. However, if Samuel was truly concerned, I thought it might be best for him to look into it. So I suggested he hires a detective. A detective, huh? Samuel mused. That's an option. I'm swamped with work, so I can't investigate it myself. I'll think it over. Samuel's response was non-committal. Regardless, I sent the detective agency's details to Samuel's computer. Let me know if you decide to hire them. I'll make the necessary arrangements from my end, I reassured. Thanks. Samuel replied with a sigh and ended the call. His demeanor was notably downcast. The situation seemed even graver than I initially thought. Days turned into weeks and Samuel neither contacted the detective nor reached out to me. Was he too busy, or had things settled down with Charlotte? Eventually, I decided to check in with him. Samuel, how have you been? 
Any updates on the situation with Charlotte? It seems you haven't engaged the detective. I genuinely hoped Samuel's concerns were unfounded. However, from his tone, it was evident that things weren't great. It's not resolved, he admitted gloomily. I considered hiring the detective, but Charlotte manages our finances, my salary, everything. I can't afford the detective's fees. Samuel explained the situation in a somber tone. Despite feeling helpless, Charlotte's behavior hasn't changed, and it seems he's been living with anxiety for several months. I get it. Hiring a detective can be pretty expensive. Samuel's allowance wouldn't nearly cover the investigation fees. Hearing Samuel's disheartened voice made me feel heavy-hearted as well. All right, I'll help out. Let me see what I can do from here. So don't be too down, Samuel. I owed him big. I thought of this as an opportunity to repay a favor and told Samuel so. I wanted to alleviate Samuel's worries, even if just a little. I asked Samuel to wait a bit and ended the call for the day. A few weeks later, I stumbled upon some unsettling information about Charlotte. Before I could share it with Samuel, he called, sounding more frantic than ever. Is everything okay? Something's come up, he blurted out. I braced myself for what Samuel would reveal next. Charlotte is threatening to sue me for alimony based on false allegations of infidelity. She even has a lawyer demanding compensation for our pending divorce, claiming they'll proceed legally if I don't pay. It sounded like Samuel had been ambushed by Charlotte and her lawyer, with unexpected demands. He explained that he had secretly called me during a break from their intense discussion. Hearing this, I was at a loss for words. I knew Samuel wasn't the type to cheat. Samuel himself probably has no idea at all. That's why he's saying it's fabricated. So, Charlotte is claiming compensation in the divorce trial based on a non-existent affair story about Samuel. Samuel is genuinely a good person who is kind to everyone. Having seen many victims of scams and frauds at work, I was always worried about good-hearted Samuel. I often wondered if he might someday be deceived. But I never imagined this deception would come from his own spouse. So, what's the situation? What's the other side saying? I mean, Samuel isn't having an affair, so this claim seems far-fetched. Given that he had received a call in the middle of our conversation, it was uncertain when Samuel might be taken back. I needed to learn as much as possible about Samuel's situation in this brief time. So I quickly pressed Samuel for details. He shared that someone had snapped a photo of him during a business meeting with a female colleague, and now they were using it as proof of an affair. In the photo, both of them were dressed professionally, and the location wasn't suggestive in any way. It was clear they were forcibly trying to frame it as evidence of infidelity. There were a few things that struck me as odd at this point, specifically the approach of the opposing lawyer. A lawyer is a professional after all. They wouldn't do anything to harm their client's interests. If it's a case of infidelity, they'll do their utmost to reduce the compensation amount in a divorce trial if their client is the one having the affair. If their client is the victim, the lawyer's job is to claim the maximum compensation. But demanding compensation based on such flimsy evidence was highly suspicious. If they truly studied law, then they're a truly terrible lawyer. If such unreasonable demands were met, anyone could make wild compensation claims. There was no need to accept such an absurd request. As a family, I couldn't stand by and do nothing. Samuel, I'm coming over right now. 
don't answer anything they say until I get there. Just stay put and wait for me. I decided to step in as Samuel's lawyer and talk to Charlotte and her lawyer. From lounging in my casual clothes, I quickly changed into my suit, shifting into work mode. I called a taxi and headed to Samuel's house as fast as I could. Upon arrival, I took a deep breath and rang the doorbell. It was Samuel who answered, and he welcomed me inside. Heading to the living room, I found Charlotte sitting next to an unfamiliar man. This man seemed to be Charlotte's attorney. Both of them looked at me in surprise. Sister-in-law, it's been a while. I greeted Charlotte briefly and then introduced myself to the man beside her. Nice to meet you. I'm Ava, an attorney. I'm here today representing Samuel. At my words, both Charlotte and her attorney looked shocked. What? Ava? A lawyer? You're joking, right? Charlotte mumbled, exchanging a quick glance with the man beside her. It's understandable that she was taken aback. She had no idea that I practiced law. I had been approached for free consultations and mentioned behind my back, leading to past troubles. As a result, I seldom share my profession with anyone other than close friends and family. Of course, that includes relatives too. Samuel understood my sentiments, so he never mentioned my job to Charlotte. That's probably why she was so surprised to see me step in as a lawyer. Charlotte controlled Samuel's income. He wouldn't have the means to hire a lawyer under normal circumstances. Perhaps she thought Samuel would be defenseless and took this opportunity to make her claims. Silently seated were Charlotte and her attorney. As I was pondering the next move, Charlotte's supposed lawyer spoke up. I don't care if you're a lawyer or not. Your brother cheated. He should obviously pay compensation, right? Beside him, Charlotte nodded in agreement. Did they genuinely believe they could win compensation in a divorce case with that? What do you have as evidence of this alleged affair? While I could never believe any tales of Samuel's infidelity, the two kept insisting even after I arrived. Wondering if they had any additional evidence beyond what Samuel shared with me, I pressed the opposing lawyer. He was having dinner with another woman. That's solid proof. Let's say we'll let it slide for $50,000. You wouldn't want this getting out to family or his workplace, would you? The man's words could be constructed as a threat. I almost chuckled, demanding $50,000 based on such a flimsy accusation. Doesn't he realize how ridiculous he sounds? His bold claims only made me want to laugh more. By this point, my suspicions were nearly confirmed. That this attorney might just be a fake. Despite being a so-called attorney, he had employed what seemed like threats against Samuel. Something that had caught my attention from the start. I initially thought he might just be a corrupt lawyer but even with a genuine attorney like me present, he kept making statements no real lawyer would utter. Claiming $50,000 compensation based on a mere public meeting is absurd. Just being in a suit in broad daylight in a public place doesn't prove infidelity. To prove adultery, there needs to be direct evidence of actual misconduct. Any attorney would know this. It's a fundamental aspect of the law. If he doesn't even know this, something's off. I understand your concerns, I began. But we can't just agree to the payment. Sir, could you provide your attorney license number and your full name? If you could also provide the name of your firm, I'll get in touch to set up another meeting. I pressed the opposing lawyer for his credentials. As expected, he began to falter. I can't quite remember my license number right now. I must have forgotten. Please contact my wife for appointments. 
forgetting one's own attorney license number? That's unimaginable for a real attorney. It's clear he's trying to deflect and quickly exit the situation. You can't say it, can you? Because you're not a real lawyer. I hit the nail on the head. I thought he would admit it now, but he defiantly countered. What are you talking about? That's absurd. I could sue you for defamation. If he could, I wished he would. I couldn't help but burst out laughing. <laughs> if you're genuine, then tell me. A trustworthy attorney wouldn't hide their identity. And a real attorney wouldn't threaten to sue over such a minor issue. I replied with a smirk, leaving him speechless. The tables seemed to have turned. Both Charlotte and the imposter attorney looked defeated. Now, the ball was in my court. Mr. Fake Attorney, aren't you actually Logan, sister-in-law's former classmate? You work in sales, don't you? Hearing this, the two of them looked up in shock. Samuel, who had been quietly watching the exchange beside me, looked at me in surprise. You're not an attorney. Your sister-in-law's affair partner. It wasn't Samuel having the affair. It was you two, wasn't it? Am I right, Charlotte? Everyone in the room was taken aback by my revelations. The sudden appearance of an attorney who knew everything must have been startling. I had been consulted by Samuel, and after learning he couldn't afford to investigate, I took matters into my own hands. I couldn't stand seeing Samuel so distressed. An investigation revealed Charlotte's affair. I had been informed of every detail about the man she was seeing, including his identity. When I arrived at the house and saw Charlotte with the man next door, I was equally taken aback. Turns out, the man who claimed to be Charlotte's lawyer was actually her affair partner. I had done my homework. I let them know I had plenty of evidence of Charlotte's affair and reminded them that Charlotte and her partner would be the ones paying compensation. So, are you still planning to claim compensation from Samuel? Upon hearing my question, both Charlotte and Logan silently shook their heads. I'm so sorry. I never meant for any of this to happen. Please forgive me. Perhaps realizing she would be the one paying, Charlotte's tone shifted to remorseful and apologetic. Logan, seeing Charlotte's demeanor, gave a slight nod of his head. Charlotte then began to talk about the fake affair. It seemed Logan had expressed his wish to marry her, and she had felt the same way. They decided to fabricate an affair to push for the divorce. The idea of also getting compensation money seemed like a good plan to her. It baffles me how someone could think, let alone execute, such a plan. Then Samuel, who had been silent till now, spoke up. You betray someone and try to frame them with a crime. You think just saying sorry will settle it? I've always trusted you as my wife, so be prepared for the consequences of what you have trampled upon. Samuel spoke calmly, but with palpable anger towards Charlotte. He was right. A mere apology can't make up for such deceit. You might not be aware, but claiming to be a lawyer without a license is a serious crime. You could face jail time or a hefty fine. And Logan, you're implicated too. There's no escaping this. Upon hearing this, both of their faces turned pale. It seemed they hadn't anticipated the gravity of the situation, Charlotte, in a frantic tone, said, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I didn't know. I, I truly apologize. Logan quickly stood up from his chair and also began to deeply apologize. I'm truly sorry. We didn't think it through. Please forgive us. 
Their fervent apologies were a stark contrast to their earlier demands. It was a foolish display. I don't care what happens to you two. I'm reporting this, Samuel declared. It's often said that the kindest people have the fiercest anger. Samuel, without a second glance at the desperately apologizing duo, went on to make his report. Wait, please, just spare us that. Ignoring their pleas, Samuel called the authorities. In the end, both were arrested. They eventually faced prison time. In the end, Samuel and his wife divorced, and the compensation from the divorce settlement offset any other financial matters. They agreed to have no future interactions. Charlotte was left without any defense, reduced to just tears. They tried to benefit by deceiving others and falsely accusing them. It was indeed a case of facing the consequences of their own actions. Regretting now is too late, but hopefully they would change for the better. After the divorce, Samuel seemed to have regained his old spirit. Ever since getting married, Samuel and I have been enjoying online gaming, something he had set aside for a while. After the whole divorce debacle with Charlotte, Samuel moved out of the room they shared and started anew in a different place, trying to shift his feelings and begin a fresh chapter. For a while, he seemed to have lost trust in people and kept his distance. But lately, I've noticed he's been slowly venturing out for meals with friends. Once Samuel feels a bit more settled, I'm thinking of introducing him to some of my trustworthy friends. More than anything, after all the hurt he's been through, I want Samuel to find happiness. Excuse me, how much longer until I'm called? Uh, we called you just now. What? Startled by the receptionist's words, I hurried into the examination room, and there was my familiar husband. Why are you here? The blood drained from John's face. In his panic, he tried to kick me out of the room. Immediately after, an unbelievable scene came into my view. My name is Christy Thomas, 27 years old. I was raised as the older of two sisters. I work in corporate office management. Three years ago, I got married and now live with my husband, John. We met in college, worked at the same part-time job, dated for four years, and got married. Even now, we maintain a relationship where we can talk about anything, just like friends. By the way, I'm currently seven weeks pregnant. We wanted a child right after we got married, but it didn't happen easily. And after two years of fertility treatment, a new life is finally growing inside me. When I went to the OBGYN alone, the gestational sac, which is the baby's growing room, was already visible, and the ultrasound photo even showed the tiny fetus. I haven't told John about the pregnancy yet. I wanted to surprise him. On the way back from the OBGYN, I bought a cake and stopped at a supermarket to get ingredients for his favorite food. When I got home, I started cooking right away. A few hours later, John, who came home saying, I'm home, widened his eyes when he saw the food on the table. Wow, it's so luxurious today. There's even my favorite, beef stew. <laughs> That's right. I thought we should have a party today. Huh? A party? Why all of a sudden? Actually, I went to the hospital today. Hospital? I handed the ultrasound photo I took out of my bag to John, who was looking anxious. Looking at it, he raised his face forcefully and stared at me. Christy, is this... really? John, we're becoming parents! We're... really? We're going to be parents? Yes, it's true. 
Our baby has finally come to us. I'm just so surprised. I'm lost for words. I know, it doesn't feel real, does it? But it's true. Our baby is really growing inside me. Growing steadily. Oh my god. Everything seems to be growing fine. Together, John, we're finally becoming parents. With every word I say, the reality of it slowly sinks in. Tears start flowing from my eyes, and before I know it, I can't stop them. John must be really happy too. He hugs me tight, his eyes also brimming with tears. Over and over again, he says, Thank you, with a grateful smile on his face. Ever since that day, John has been taking on even more of the household chores than before. We used to share the housework, but now he's taken over cleaning the bathroom because it's too dangerous for me. He's also been proactive about grocery shopping for heavy items like rice and water. But that's not all. In order to reduce my burden even a little bit, he started making appointments for my prenatal checkups on his own. He's been asking about my schedule and making my checkup appointments for me, since I'm not so good with using the internet. I've been experiencing mild morning sickness, but not enough to keep me bedridden, so I've continued to work as usual. When I get home, I make dinner and wait for John to come back. He's been working overtime a lot since about a year ago and usually doesn't get home until after 9 p.m. This night, though, he didn't come home even when it was past 10 p.m. Whenever it gets past 9 p.m., he always calls, but tonight, there's no word from him. I try reaching out to him, but there's no response, so I wait for him anxiously. Then, just past 11 p.m., I hear the sound of the front door opening. I rushed over to greet him. John, welcome home! I was worried because you didn't contact me. Ah, uh, sorry. Something came up. But you weren't supposed to have overtime today, right? Did something happen? Uh, no, no. Just got some unexpected work. His eyes are clearly avoiding mine. Something seems off about how he's speaking. An uneasy premonition gripped me, and I confronted him right away. John, are you hiding something? What? What are you talking about? I'm not hiding anything. Then why won't you look me in the eye? If you have nothing to hide, you should be able to tell me where you were and what you were doing, right? I... I told you! I got caught up with an unexpected job. Some... Some screw-up by a junior. I had to step in and handle it. But even if that was the case, couldn't you have sent me a message like you usually do? I texted you several times. I even called you, didn't I? Well, it couldn't be helped. I was busy. I didn't have time to answer your calls. John, who was usually so composed, raised his voice and glared at me. This was the first time I had ever seen him like this and it startled me. He continued ranting, panting, and out of breath. After all I do, working late and then coming home to be doubted? What nerve. Is it fun for you, making a fool out of people like this? What are you talking about? I'm not making a fool out of you, I'm just asking why you were late. I said it was because of overtime, didn't I? What more do you want? It's not about what I want or don't want. You didn't contact me like you usually do. That's why I thought it was strange. Oh, enough. You're being so stubborn. Is it because you're pregnant that you're having these intense delusions? What? Listen, Christy. When the time comes for you to give birth, you won't be able to work. And then who do you think is going to support us? Me right? If you want to be supported, stop interfering in my work. John then left, 
throwing off his suit and going straight into the bath, after which he shut himself in our bedroom. What was left in the living room was the untouched dinner I had prepared. In front of the untouched side dishes, I was overwhelmed by indescribable emotion. Why? Why would he say things like that? All I did was point out that something felt off. To call it delusions? That's too harsh. Since that day, John began treating me coldly. It became normal for him to come home in the early hours of the morning, and the days when he would come home by 9pm, as he used to, became rare. In the midst of all this uncertainty, my pregnancy continued. John, who used to help out with anything and everything, no longer did any household chores, leaving it all to me. The strain of doing the housework while being careful not to exert too much force on my stomach gradually wore me down. Finally, unable to handle everything alone, I called my younger sister Karen. Hey, Karen! Oh sis! Long time no see! What's up? Well, I had a bit of a spat with John. Oh, really? You two are just like the saying, the more you argue, the better you get along, huh? Karen, my sister, who's three years younger than me, is working in the fashion industry. We've always been referred to as two peas in a pod, and we're very close. During my dating days with John, she was my go-to for advice. She's an irreplaceable part of my life. That day, too, she listened to me for almost an hour before I ended the call. Opening up to her helped me feel a bit better. I was in the 17th week of my pregnancy, and my belly was starting to show. Entering the stable period, I felt fine, so I headed to work as usual. After my lunch break, just as I was about to start my afternoon tasks, something happened. I felt a sudden, unfamiliar twinge in my belly. What was that? The pain seemed to linger. In that moment, I thought about the safety of my child. Feeling anxious, I left work early and rushed to the women's clinic I usually visit. Normally, John would make an appointment for me, but today was unexpected, and I didn't have one. It looked like I'd have to wait a while for a checkup, but the thought of going home like this filled me with anxiety. Ready for a long wait? I explained the situation to the reception staff. Excuse me, I'm Christy Thomas, and I've been having some mild abdominal pain for a while. Thomas, please, wait a moment. Uh, I didn't have an appointment because it was unexpected today. Oh, here you are. Huh? You're Christy Thomas, right? 17 weeks pregnant? We have an appointment for you. Please, wait over there. Um, okay. As instructed, I took a seat on the waiting room sofa. I took out my planner from my bag to check, but there was no appointment scheduled for today. Since that incident, things have been awkward between John and me, but he's still been making my medical appointments as usual. That said, my next appointment isn't until later. It's definitely not today. Feeling somewhat uneasy, I decided to just wait until they called me. About an hour passed when I was hit by the stomach ache again. I stood up and headed to the restroom. And yet, my turn still hadn't come. Even for a busy clinic, I should have been called by now. Could it be that I didn't really have an appointment? I went back to the reception desk and asked a different staff member. Excuse me. Do you know how much longer it will be until I'm called? May I have your name, please? It's Thomas. Christy Thomas. I've been waiting for over an hour. Thomas. Oh. Is there a problem? Well, you were called just now. What? You should have been called into consultation room number three. I thanked the staff and quickly headed to the consultation room. A sign on the door of room number three read, In Consultation. 
in consultation. I was supposed to be called, so why? Could someone else have mistakenly entered? In a split second, I knocked on the door of consultation room number three. A nurse opened the door and asked, Can I help you? Um, I'm... I'm Christy Thomas. I had to use the restroom earlier, and... Christy Thomas? The receptionist said I was already called, but the sign said in consultation, so I thought maybe someone else had gone in. Wait, you're Christy Thomas? But she's already inside. What? No matter how I thought about it, something was off. Convinced of this, I pushed past the nurse and forced my way into the examination room. That's when it happened. An unbelievable sight met my eyes. Why are you... here? There, in the room, was none other than my husband, John. The moment he saw me, he started speaking in a flustered manner. C christy what are you doing here? That's what I was going to ask. Why are you here? That... well, uh... Could it be, John? Did you make the appointment under my name? But why? Just get out for now! John tried to forcefully push me out of the room. However, given this obviously strange situation, I couldn't just back down. John, explain this to me! Why are you here right now? I... I I'll explain later! So, for now... I want an explanation now! You can't expect me to just accept this, can you? I'm begging you, just leave for now. While I was arguing with John, the doctor, probably returning from an internal exam, came back, looking puzzled. Wait, Christy, huh? Seeing me, the doctor's eyes widened. Doctor, I just got here. Huh? Then who did I just examine? Just as he said that, the door to the exam room opened. Coming out of the room was none other than my sister, Karen. Oh, Karen? I had absolutely no idea what was going on anymore. Why is Karen here? Uh, well... Um... My frustration grew at Karen's hesitation. I confronted her. Why is the appointment under my name? And why did you come out of the examination room? Then, the doctor, who had been listening, opened his mouth. Mrs. Thomas, I apologize for not realizing it was not you. She was wearing a mask, so I couldn't tell. But I thought it was strange. You're supposed to be 17 weeks pregnant, but the baby was too small. It was no wonder the doctor didn't realize. My sister and I looked so much alike, and she was wearing a mask. Doctor, the person you just examined is my sister, and that man there is my husband. What? So, you mean the father of the baby I just examined is... The doctor's sharp gaze locked onto John. I could see the color draining from his face. And at that moment, I finally understood everything. John? Karen? I need an explanation. From the beginning. Whether they had given up or not, they slowly started to speak. According to them, they had been in a relationship for about a year. While I was struggling to get pregnant and undergoing fertility treatment, they claimed temptation got the better of them. Then, my pregnancy was confirmed. At first, they were purely happy, but shortly after, Karen's pregnancy was also confirmed. Karen asked John to accompany her to the hospital because she was scared, and John, in his usual carelessness, mistakenly booked the appointment under my account. He noticed this just before we arrived at the hospital, panicked, pretended to forget the insurance card, and completed the check-in. While I was in the restroom, the staff at the front desk's shift changed. 
As soon as they called the name for the appointment, Karen must have slipped into the examination room without running into me. The doctor initially didn't realize it was Karen, since she was wearing a mask. But of course, during the examination, it became clear she wasn't me. And as the doctor was wondering about this, the real Christy arrived at the examination room. After that, I regained my composure and had my own checkup. The abdominal pain was diagnosed as transient and there was no problem with my baby. I took my husband and sister and headed straight for our parents' house. I also contacted John's parents and asked them to come to the house. Once everyone was gathered, I explained to them the whole situation. Of course you're going to take responsibility, right? I asked. Stammering, my husband responded. R responsibility Of course! I will continue to be with you, Christy. Huh? What are you talking about? We're obviously getting a divorce. Uh, but... You just mentioned responsibility. The responsibility I'm talking about is alimony. I'm going to make sure you pay, both you and Karen, for what you've done. What? What? Wait a minute. I never intended to get a divorce. My husband's words sparked anger in my sister, who was standing nearby. What? You said you loved me more. Was that all a lie? Karen grabbed my husband's collar, and they started to argue. Their noisy squabble pushed my anger to its peak. I splashed the tea from the table on both of them, raising my voice as much as possible. Enough is enough! I don't care about your opinions! I'm divorcing John, and I'm cutting ties with Karen. You two just need to pay the alimony. Quietly! W wait Christy! The one I love is you. Sis? I'm your sister, aren't I? Don't talk about alimony. Shut up! Both of you only say things that suit your purposes. How far do you plan to ridicule me? I will collect the alimony by any means necessary. If it means sending you two to hell, I'll do whatever it takes. If you get it, get out of my sight, you scumbag. At that, both of them began to prostrate themselves in front of me. Please forgive me, Christy. I beg you. This, I also beg you. It's too late for their repentance. What they did is unforgivable, and I have absolutely no intention of forgiving them. After that, my husband and I divorced, as expected. I blocked Karen's contact information and cut off all ties with them completely. They were disowned by their families and had to start living on their own. But John's affair was spread to his workplace through his parents, and because of that, he started receiving cold stares from his colleagues. Unable to bear the atmosphere, he continued to be absent from work without notice and was eventually fired. Karen, on the other hand, was suffering from severe morning sickness and had already quit her job. Now jobless, whenever they faced each other, they cursed at each other and led a miserable life. They began living together, but they hadn't gotten married. I think they won't support each other as a married couple in the future. As for me, I moved back to my parents' house and I'm now leading a pregnant life. I switched my job to remote work and am anxiously waiting for the birth of my child. I might make my child suffer because there's no father. Even so, I intend to love this child with all my heart in my own way.